What's up, what's up guys? It's your boy Damon and you guys know what time it is. It's time to talk about the patch notes before we get started. Um, I have to apologize to a lot of people that I said Luna was never a possibility. I'm not saying that Luna is coming this patch, but based on the actions that, that Smilegate has taken, or Super Creative has taken this patch, I think that Luna is now definitely a possibility of reappearing, okay? Uh, I don't know when, but you guys will understand what I'm talking about after we finish talking about these notes. So, now that I got you hyped, let's go ahead and get into these patch notes. So. Hero Remake, your boy Ken has been changed. Uh, Ken is designed, was designed as an offensive unit whose power increases based on his max HP. However, uh, he has been using Phoenix for a long time and he has been using his basic skills during battle. Uh, after this re remake, we have increased Ken's skill range and have given him more useful, uh, make, making him more useful with the second skill, which will allow Ken to be useful in a variety of modes. Okay, so you guys are seeing like the skill ammo a animation series, got some stuff going on. Um, so now let's talk about this. Um, so basically has some skills here. Celestial Kit consumes fighting spirit and allows Ken to quickly deal huge damage by increasing his speed alongside a high chance of decreasing defense of the target. I would suggest using this skill on enemies with low health due to the debuff effect. Um, okay, that doesn't make sense, but sure. <laughs> the skill Phoenix Flirt consumes all fighting spirit to strongly attack the enemy and stun them. The skill will now uh, also grant the buff Vigor to Ken. Actually, let's just go to the skill descriptions. <laughs> Uh, so knockout attacks with the Flurvia strikes, burning for two turns. This is the skill one. If the can caster is granted vigor, um, damage dealt increases proportional to the target's max health. Right. So basically, you're you're going to be comboing. Uh, I'd imagine uh, with specific skills based on you know certain times in combat. Uh, skill two is an active. Uh, cooldown is three turns. Attacks the enemy with the power powerful kick, increasing speed of the caster for two turns. And with a 75% chance to decrease defense of the target for two turns. If the caster's granted vigor has a 100% chance to decrease defense of the target for two turns, ignoring effect resistance. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. So hold on, let's take a second here and talk about this. So basically what's going to happen is, I'm assuming his third skill, Phoenix Flurry, uh, applies vigor to, the, to Ken. So it's going to be in a situation where uh, skill three is basically going to go first. So hopefully that's how they program the AI. Um, and then after that, he's going to follow with skill two, skill one, I'd imagine. Okay. So what's going to happen is skill three will go first, celestial kick will go second, and as long as he has vigor, basically um, he's he has a hundred percent chance to apply defense break that cannot be resisted. Um, this is going to be OP for Wyvern. I'm talking stupid OP for Wyvern. Um, so if for those of you guys who have Ken, um, be ready to put him in your lineup because this is really, really strong. Um, for those of you guys who fed your kin to Moonlight Kin or any other kin, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops, kind of deal. Uh, but yeah, he's really strong. Always keep your Nat 5s. Please, just do it. Just do it, unless you have two of them. <laughs> two of the same one. Just keep keep one unique copy of each one, guys, because this is huge. And, it's, and especially since it can't be resisted, even with the 75% chance, even if he doesn't have Vicar, if his AI works differently, like that's still really, really strong for a two-turn death break, guys. So that's huge. Um, third skill, Phoenix Flurry, uh, after awakening, delivers a powerful blow, uh, a flurry of strikes, stunning for one turn and decreasing attack for two turns before granting vigor to the caster for four turns and gaining 15 fighting spirit. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. Caster begins the first battle with 50 fighting spirit. Mm, close my door, my damn heater just came on. Um, and gains five fighting spirit when attacked. Okay. So... This is gonna this is gonna be uh, a big thing. So since he starts with fighting spirit and the damage dealt increases um, to proportional to his max health, like it's it's gonna be a lot of fun to play with this unit. Um, with that attack break, like I said, guys, he's gonna be perfect for Wyvern. With the attack break, uh, with the stun combo, and you know makes him viable in PvP. Um, and then of course with the attack break, it makes him huge in any PvE situation outside of Banshee, of course. Uh, but he's definitely going to be strong for both Golem and Wyvern. Um, so again, for all you Ken users out there, you should be really, 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 really excited about this patch, guys. Really excited. So anyway, so those are some chains. Um, uh, oh, here, hold on, let's talk about this. Um, he'll gain 50, often reduce the time it takes to completely fill his fighting spirit guards. Previously, it took five turns for his gauge to be filled, uh, but now his gauge will be filled faster. Uh, if Ken will be attacked with burning, um, he will be granted the, vig the buff vigor. Um, tax damage base increases approximately 105%. Health base damage increases 5%. Um, okay, types of flurry. Okay, hold on a second. 
Okay, so he gains vigor uh, on skill three. I have to read this because the translation is kind of kind of weird. Um, okay, no, it's not. Okay, so he gains vigor on skill one and skill three. So that basically, as long as you apply burn, so you need some effectiveness on him, um, and you're using a skill three with the six turn cooldown, you, you're pretty much running a 100% defense break for two. <laughs> That's stupid. That is so stupid, guys. That's really stupid. Like, he's, he's good. He's good. Um, so his passive has been replaced, so all of his skills are active, um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Uh, next thing up, guys, we got the side story here. Ken, oh, I'm so jealous of you guys right now. Uh, side story, uh, part two, so we can get the tickets and we can actually finish our freaking card. We can get one max card. Um, from what I'm thinking with this thing is once you get the other two cards, you're able to max one and then you can take one to 30 and it gives you more of a bonus, right? Uh, so it's easier to farm these tickets. Uh, so it'll be more beneficial this week. Um, now, which brings me kind of to my next point, guys. So get your tickets, get your stuff. Oh, before we get into Cirilla's challenge here, a um, couple of things. Free-to-play players, I recommend you just go in there. You get what you need to get. You buy your stuff and get out of there. Pay-to-play players, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to open boxes, continue to open boxes. By all means, go ahead. Um, if you do not want to continue to open boxes, go in there, get your things, and get on out of there, okay? So that's going to be up to your discretion. Just understand that it's expensive as hell. But we'll have to see what the new bonus is with the fully upgraded card uh, to justify whether or not it's going to be worth it to farm cards based on the energy spent or not. Um, you know, I have some other videos coming uh, we'll, after I play with it a little bit to kind of see where we're at. Uh, but until then, it's up to your discretion, okay? Well, it's always up to your discretion, but, you know, I'll add some my input in there a little later. Okay, so... Here's the next thing, though, Cirilla's Challenge. Now, this was a hero that was out uh, back in Halloween for Korea. And Korea, uh, I didn't think that we'd ever get this again because Cirilla was a challenge that they were able to get, um, along with Luna being a banner uh, that was a limited banner that we are also we were not also able to get because it was only in Korea. So I didn't think Cirilla's Challenge would ever come back, nor did I, I think Luna's, Luna's thing would come back um, for a long time. But... Now that they brought Cirilla's challenge back so close to when it was out back in October, I think it's a very high chance that we might see another Luna again, okay? Um, yeah, I'm just going to say that. So like I said, apologies to anybody that said, yo, that I was like, yo, that ish is not going to happen. Um, but yeah, it actually might happen. When though, I have no idea, but... Yeah, so we're going to have Cirilla's Challenge. She's a four-star hero that we can get. Uh, there's a specific chance for her to drop when you play normal, hard, and hell difficulties. Um, and you have a chance to receive her. So basically, it's going to be a free triple S hero. Uh, these are some screenshots. Uh, you guys can see Cirilla. She actually looks really, really cool. Um, I'm going to be talking about her skills and stuff in another video because I actually want to take the time and really look her over. Uh, they have included them here. But you have a 20% drop. Uh, 20... 20 <laughs> A 20% chance to get her as a drop in hell mode, okay? Uh, so, Cirilla is an event hero who can only be obtained during the challenge duration and cannot be used to enhance or promote other heroes. So, think of Kiki Rod. Uh, Cirilla can only be used to enhance, promote, or memory imprint herself. Additionally, Silver Transmit Stones will not be issued upon transmission. So, you can't get rid of her, so you might as well just triple S her and do what you gotta do. Uh, reputation has been added to this challenge. So, they got Reputation Rewards to so make sure that you guys pay attention because we can get an extra Transmit Stone out of this on top of the Transmit Stone that you get for uh, defeating it on hell. Okay, sorry, just kidding. The Transmit Stone is for defeating it on hell. It's not two, just one, okay? Let's, let's get that clear. Don't be cursing me out, right? Uh, there's some other improvements and bug fixes look like. Zone 1, Capital, Cannot Be Buff. Okay, some miscellaneous stuff. Reputation, Challenge Improvements, Achievements, Recorded Zerato and Cerulis Challenge have been removed from the Conquest list. Maximum Health and Monsters in Abyss has been decreased by 5%. Um, Guider Aether's friendship level no longer appears incorrectly, clearing a stage, tap the arrange, as before, transmission UI list no longer overlaps, Geneva no longer shakes, uh, line breaks, blah 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 blah. Okay, so overall, dope patch. Now, now here's what I think about this. Um, this patch to me, like outside of the big changes to Ken, which are huge, um, and the Cirilla, uh, which is going to give everybody a mage, I'm sure is probably going to be effective. I don't remember her skills. I uh, will talk about that, like I said, in the next video. Uh, but this patch is a filler patch, in my opinion. So what that tells me is um, when the Kisei banner is over, uh, you guys better be ready, okay? Because I feel like it's about to get real. All right, so just understand that when that Kisei banner finishes next week, next Tuesday, y'all better be ready to go because 
Like filler patches, you already know, man. This is this is a buying time patch. Like in my opinion, I think this is just this is just a patch to buy time. They're like, hey, let's give us give them these units because uh, we need time to work on the next big thing that we're working on. So I think next week, once Kisei, be prepared for a double banner. I'd imagine, um, especially since we've got no new banner, we just got the hero improvement plus the Cirilla, okay, who's already in the game. But be prepared for a double banner. I just I'm t be prepared for a double banner or something crazy, okay. Um, especially with the teasers, with that new units, with the new continent, um, and with, uh, you know, with, with Bologna now being in the connections, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be prepared. Okay. So anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover. I'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about Cirilla. I uh, will talk about builds, break down, uh, what I intend to do with her once I get her, um, how I'm going to use her and all that jazz and what I think about her kit here in the next video. Um, and for everybody else, man, happy new year's guys. Thank you guys so much for being, continue to be a part of this community as we grow and expand, um, and just love the hell out of this game. I appreciate all of you guys and, uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.